Hi guys, today we're going to run through the daily checks we do before we drive Ruby in the morning to come and fetch you. Um, Ruby's a VW transporter bus and we call her Ruby because she's Ruby Red and I think Stuart had a lot to do with uh, her being called Ruby. That's what I understand anyway. If I'm wrong you can let me know guys. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that Ruby is safe for me to drive her and that you're safe when you're in it being driven to and from Aspire and when we're out on trips or out on um, excursions during the day. Um, these checks don't only apply for Ruby, they apply to all the cars that we use for transport. That's your family cars, your carers cars, um, any public transport buses you might use or taxis you might use. And I would suggest that any professional driver, i.e. bus driver or um, HGV driver, a taxi driver, myself, who actually drive for a living, should go through some checks to make sure that vehicle's fit for purpose. So what most of us do is we get in and we turn on the ignition and we get lots of warning lights because they're checking the systems on the car to make sure it's safe for you, okay? So all that's left is the little P down there, which is your parking light, which is saying the parking brake is on, the rear handbrake's on. The engine management light is on, and also that I haven't got my seat belt on, and I haven't got my seat belt on because I'm not going anywhere, I'm just sat on the driveway, okay? So if I was to start the car, start Ruby I'm just left with two lights and as I've explained to you my seat belt isn't on because I'm not going anywhere and the parking brake is on if I was just to move the car which I'm still on the drive just move it slightly it comes off it goes off the parking brake goes off and I'll just put it back on again okay so I'm going to turn this back off most people will just go in the morning, jump in, do what I've just done, and drive off. But is that the right thing to do? Should we rely on the fact that the car is telling us that it's okay to drive? Well, the answer to that from all the main motoring organisations, that's the AA, the RAC, Institute of Advanced Motorists, that all tell you that's not sufficient, and it isn't, it isn't sufficient. Um, there's much more that we need to do to make sure that's safe, the bus in the morning is safe for me to drive and for me to pick you up and get you to Aspire and back, okay? And there's an acronym, a word that we can use to help us to remember all the things that we need to check on Ruby to make sure she's safe. Now an acronym is basically just a word that's used to help us to remember things. And the acronym that we're gonna to use today is powdery. P-O-W-D-E-R-Y, powdery. And each letter in powdery stands for something on the car or in the system on the car that we need to check. So we start off with P, and P stands for petrol or diesel, if you've got a diesel car, or it might also mean in this new world that you've got enough charge if you've got an electric car, okay? So is what I would do is you can see that this dial has just turned round and we're nearly, what's that, two thirds, three quarters full of, this is diesel, this is a diesel car. Um, Ruby's also diesel, it's got the same engine as my, uh, as my VW here, okay? So we know we've got enough petrol or diesel for the journey, or charge, yeah? And a little interesting fact for you guys, Nearly 800,000 motorists every year in the UK run out of fuel. 
and that's taken from the RIC website. 800,000 people run out of fuel and the vast majority of vehicles on the road have got a fuel gauge. There's very few these days that haven't. Some motorbikes don't, some old cars might not have, but the vast majority have got a fuel gauge like you can see down there. I'll put up the screen on the right to let us know. And usually a light comes on to say, you've run out of fuel, you need to refuel, and still 800,000 people run out of fuel. That's just a bit silly, isn't it, guys? Okay, so that's the peen powdery. Right, in most engines, well, nearly every engine, we have oil, which lubricates the oil. One of the lights that came on, on the dashboard when I first started up, said that the oil level's okay. But the oil level's okay, and it's not empty, it's not down to the point where um, it's gonna turn the system and say, you need to put oil in. So we will do that as a physical check as well in the engine bay. And the engine bay checks is gonna be a separate video. Okay, so that's the oil. So we've done the P and the O. The next one is the W. So that's for water, were for water. So in the washer bottle, we put water in or we put um, screen fluid in so we can ensure that we can clean the windscreen on the, on the bus so that if we do get any mud on it or dirt on it, we can clear it, okay? So on this vehicle, there is a washer bottle light and there's also one on Ruby to let us know that the washer bottle doesn't need filling. But, think about it, that washer bottle could be fairly low and I could use the washer bottle once or twice and then it need filling. So it's something, again, that we're gonna check in the engine bay later, okay? As well as the washer bottle, we will need to check the coolant system as well to make sure we've got enough coolant. Again, there's a warning light on the dashboard, but we're going to physically check the coolant level as well in the engine bay. So we've done P, we've done O, we've done W, powdery. So the next one is D for damage. So sometimes we don't always park our vehicles on the drive, and we know that you, you all know that Ruby gets parked in the car park at Aspire at the Northfield Centre. Ruby also gets parked outside Julie's house and we don't know what happens to it while we're away from the vehicle. So we're gonna walk around the vehicle and just make sure that everything is as it should be. There's no dents or cracks or marks that weren't there the day before. Make sure, that, so that's the damage. Yeah, and again, you've got to do that outside the vehicle. So that's the P, the O, the W, the D, E's next. We're going to check the electrics on the car. So what electrics have we got on the car that work? Well, there's an awful lot of electrics on a modern car, yeah? But the main things we're going to check is that all the lights work on the car. And again, on Ruby, like on this VW, there is a warning light to let you know that a light is out, but it doesn't tell you which light is out. Okay. So we're going to do a physical check of the lights. We're going to make sure that the headlights work. We're going to make sure that the indicators work. We're going to make sure that the side lights work. We're going to make sure that the brake lights work. Um, if your vehicle's got driving lights, the front lights that are always on, and you'll see that quite a lot if you get driven around, that a lot of cars have got lights on the front. We'll make sure that the driving lights work. We haven't got any on Ruby. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that. We're going to check that the horn works. Does everybody know what a horn's for? If you don't, look it up, because that's one thing I'm not going to tell you about. Okay. So, P petrol, O oil, W water, D damage, E electrics, R stands for rubber. What things on the car are made of rubber that are really important? That's the tyres. The tyres are the only things between us and the road surface, yeah? So we need to make sure those tyres in tip-top condition. We need to make sure that the right pressure, there's no damage to them, that they're 
at the minimum at least the minimum legal tread depth which for Ruby is 1.6 millimeters tread depth yeah and we also need to check the windscreen wiper blades as well so that the windscreen wiper blades are in a good condition so that when we put the washers the wipers on and the washers on that we get a nice clear screen when it goes across and back so that if it's raining we can look through a clear screen okay and that again that's something we're going to physically check we're going to have to do that physically to check that finally why at the end of rubbery and this is the most important thing that you check before you drive ruby and that is a why for you as in i mean me the driver you the driver am i fit to drive am i taking any medicine that might make me a bit drowsy or might be might make me feel under the weather so that I haven't got the concentration to drive. Was I at a party last night? Did I have a drink? Have I left enough hours? After I've had a, an alcoholic drink to be able to drive because obviously it is a criminal offence to, to drive when you've got alcohol in your body at a certain level. So the rule of thumb is for every unit of alcohol that you're taking it takes an hour for that to run through your system plus you put 12 hours on top of that so the experts say if you have two pints of beer which is about three units depending on how strong it is yeah that means that you've got to wait three hours plus 12 hours before you drive again so three plus 12 is 15 so you shouldn't drive, according to all the experts, unless you've got 15 hours between your last drink and those three points that you had. Okay. So, you are the most important thing for that vehicle. You've got to make sure that your concentration is up to it, that you're fit to do the job, and that I'm in the right place and the right um, mindset so that I can drive the van, pick you all up, and drop you off at Aspire safely okay that's what it's all about make sure the van's in a fit state I'm in a fit state or Julie or Stuart depending on who's going to drive that day to get you to Aspire and back safely now what we're going to do guys is we need to go outside we need to check in the engine bay where we'll check the oil the water levels and make sure everything is as it should be in the engine bay we're going to make sure there's no damage around the vehicle and we're also going to check the tires because it takes a while in the engine bay I'm going to make that a separate video that you can watch and also the tires I'm going to jack the car up and we can go through what you need to check on the tire and in future if anybody want to do these checks with me when Ruby's at Aspire is all you need to do is ask and as long as it's not throwing down with rain and it's nice we can put Ruby in a safe, safe place and we can run all these run through all these checks with you if you want to do that okay so for now remember powdery because I might ask you guys petrol oil water damage electrics rubber and finally you, me the driver, okay? So guys, I'll see you next time, bye.